Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to be looking at the multiplayer mode in Homefront The Revolution, known as Resistance Mode. Now, we've already looked at the campaign in Homefront and said it was a little bit hit and miss with the story petering out quite quickly and the game being a bit sort of jump in, jump out and the mechanics being a little bit stagnant. Um, this mode, to me, is arguably the selling point of the game. It's four-player online co-op. This mission you're seeing here is called Infiltration and what basically this does it allows you to sort of take on a series of missions in the game setting the difficulty with you and your friends and fighting the kpa in various different circumstances i'm going to sort of highlight the different things that you can do within this mode while you're watching this campaign go ahead so first and foremost the best thing to say is you can actually create multiple resistance fighters who can fight independently that being said any unlocked equipment and currency is shared between them so every time you take part in a mission you gain XP whether or not you win or lose and same with currency you gain that even if you fail but obviously if you win in the mission you get a boost to both um, so that's the first thing is the sense that you can just create four different fighters customize and tailor them in any way you see fit and then you can obviously take any of those into battle at any one point you also get a guerrilla toolkit, which is like an arsenal of tools you can take into battle with you, and that includes explosives, Molotov cocktails, hack devices, and things like distraction tools, which you can use to kind of get enemies out of your path so you can get by discreetly. The game will have regular free content updates, uh, and they will be adding new co-op missions over time. The first one is actually due to come out in June, so we'll be keeping an eye out for that. And the developers have said that they're going to be free for the first year. So uh, we assume that any time from that part point, you will be paying for any additional content. But it's still pretty cool to know that you buy this and then you're going to get a lot of additional updates as you go along. Um, so you can just quick play this or set to a private game. You can open your squad up publicly or you can just keep it to your friends, whatever's most comfortable for you. You can also set the difficulty as I previously said. But bear in mind, fighting with just two of you, even on easy, is damn hardcore. So um, we're actually playing with three of us in this mission and we do get toasted a couple of times but when it was me and my other friend playing just together we got roasted a couple of times so just bear that in mind um, easy conditions mean there's no bleed up time away incapacitated you get limited player lives per checkpoint if you jump to normal players will bleed out when they're incapacitated and on hard enemies are even more brutal they spawn in greater numbers and there are much tougher units being spawned and players will of course bleed out faster so yeah just bear that in mind when you're playing um, there are six different missions at the moment in the game. As I said before, this one is called Infiltration. And in this one, you have to enter a KPA stronghold and steal a supply convoy and then get the supplies out of the zone as soon as possible. But then there's also five others. There's Alas Barricadas, where you have to help a patroller around an area around a resistance safe house. So you have to protect that for as long as possible. There's Enemy at the Gates, where you have to locate a team of KPA snipers and eliminate them. Burnt offerings where you raid a KPA warehouse to destroy supplies and then you hit them hard before they reform their defences. The There's brownstone bushwhacking the where you hijack a KPA convoy and destroy it. And finally breach and clear where you have to rescue a, re a captured resistance agent before he's interrogated. So when you enter the sort of the main screen, there's a character setup and an armory store. And in the character setup you can basically equip yourself and attire yourself from head to toe. They're mostly cosmetic items like scarves and glasses, but you can also equip useful items like backpacks which enable you to carry more items and ammo capacity. Uh, there's also gloves which you can boost your melee takedown speed, but usually items are labelled in separate ways. So for instance, useful items like the gloves are labelled as gear items, or you can have like the glasses which are labelled as vanity items. There are also various weapon types shown off as well, like assault rifles and shotgun variants. You can add and edit attachments to develop things like accuracy, rate of fire, damage, ammo capacity. And this means switching out your barrel and scope, similar to what you get in the main game, which you can do on the fly. Uh, you can also collect weapon parts as well when you're playing through the game, when you're picking up uh, items as you're entering rooms. And then you can use them to build up other attributes as well for your guns. Of course, there's your primary weapon, which, as you can see, I'm using an assault rifle. You also get a sidearm, which, as you might expect, is generally pistol or automatic pistol. Uh, but that's your loadout you can gain. You can uh, tailor and customize those however you see fit. Uh, taking part in missions as well boosts your XP, so you can use that to boost different tiers in different categories. So there's four different categories. There's Brains, Brawn, Fighter, and Survivor. 
Now, just to sort of let you know what perks I've gone for, I've opted for two brains perks in Perfect, which reduces all your tier unlock costs by one. So I thought that would be quite cool to have that, so then it'd be easier for me to unlock things more regularly. And then there's Lifesaver, which revives your teammates much faster. Now, I've been finding, as I've been playing this, I'm, I'm kind of a medic. I think I'm an inbuilt medic, so I'm constantly the guy who runs out to try and save my buddies, basically. So I thought this would be useful for me. Uh, in Brawn, I then opted for Parkour. Now, as you can see in this, there's a lot of sort of jumping between platforms and roofs and climbing up walls. So, for me, because I do that quite often, this enables you to climb quicker and have a long... Uh, so, to get up to your places much faster. So, I thought that would be useful. I've also opted for a longer sprint as well, because having a longer sprint is usually pretty effective when you need to get somewhere pretty damn quick. So you can also set boosters for each match. Uh, they're only good for one run. So that booster could be you could earn more money in one particular run or you could earn more health. Um, so it's, it's basically worth putting those on when you think and you feel a bit confident you're going to do well in the run. Basically, just try not to waste them because they're only in certain crates at which you have to actually pay for, not out of real currency, but in-game currency. So don't waste them. Um, you also get farmers which grant temporary skill effects so for instance you could be boosting your your health or you could be boosting your rate of fire temporarily so those can also be brought into battle and again used in desperate circumstances. Now in the armory you get to pay for different crates with money earned in battle. Now each of these uh, there are actually various different types which I'm going to sort of run through with you quickly. Uh, there's the Recruit Gear Crate, which you can buy for a thousand, and that gives you um, a chance of survival with basic gear items like uh, of rank 1 or better, and then you also get vanity, one vanity item and a consumable. There's the Grunt Gear Crate, which again is for 2,000, and that contains a gear item of a rank 3 or better, and there's, again there's more vanity, vanity items and consumables in that. Uh, there's the Veteran Gear Crate, which contains a gear item of rank 5, Again, with vanity and consumable. The attachment crate contains an attachment which you can use for your weapons, which is quite neat. Uh, there are also possible contents in that of more consumables and a GTK blueprint. Um, then there's the consumable crate, which just contains consumables, basically. So that's going to include your farmers, your boosters, your ammo, and your weapon parts. The vanity crate, which, as you might suspect, is just cosmetics. And finally, you get the weapon crate which again just is going to contain a weapon of some sort for 2000 but then that could also contain a consumable or a GTK blueprint and as you see in there about the blueprints you can actually make weapons as well so you gain the blueprint and then providing you've got the right parts you can then build that weapon to use in the game so as you can see this is quite an interesting to play we're having a nice little run of it it's entertaining, it, it does sell the game to a degree, um, but again, it's not going to be for everyone. It is nice to see they're going to be updating it regularly, but I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See you next time.